It's so funny. Yeah. I wish y'all could be on stage with me and see you. Right? Yesterday, right? So remember, we this 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 event 100% sold out, right? That we had no more tickets for anyone to participate. So yesterday, it's standing room only. People are standing in the back, right? Uh, or uh, I want to make sure that I'm at the sushi bar before everybody else, right? And then it, 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 someone asked me uh, this morning, I said, is, is it always like this or is this just a COVID hangover what I went? And that's always like this, right? Because at 8 o'clock, the room only had about 20% of the people in it, right? And you go, man, I wonder if they had a listing appointment, would they be that late? <laughs> <laughs> right? So we've just been sitting back waiting for you to show up. Yep. So thanks for showing up. All right, we have a great, uh, a great day for you. Now, remember, we end at uh, noon. My guess is we will be ending earlier than that. That's just a prediction. Uh, given our time schedule, I predict we'll be closer to 11.20, 11.30 we'll be done. By the way, that's a warning means don't leave. And, you know, we, we, we don't do this thing of saving the best for first or the, save the best for the middle or the last, but today is a rocking day and we're going to move fast. Uh, we're going to end the day uh, on the last hour with talking about how to how to build wealth, uh, and you don't want to miss it. So just hang on to your seat. Um, we should be done probably 11:30, 11:20. Is that's just a guess, okay? And we did that on purpose because usually people start leaving at 11:30, even if Mahatma Gandhi's on stage, which he won't be. He won't be. But I'm just saying that people leave, they oh, got to go, got to play, blah blah blah. So we've moved everything up out of respect for that. So you're good. Good morning. Good to see you. Good morning. Morning. Gary, before, All right. we, before we kick this off, you asked us to cue the videos, and we have Ty Voyles talking about practicing your craft, which is the perfect setup for these two. Well, let's, so we can go to that, to Ty. let's do that video. Thank you. I don't know if you're a baseball fan or not, uh, but the Nationals just traded away arguably the greatest hitter since Ted Williams. Um, and it was a very, it, it hurt, right? But it was it was probably the right thing for them to do. Um, but when I look at it, I think that, you know, there's a lot of similarity between sport and between, you know, business. And when you look at somebody like Juan Soto, who's due to make a half a billion dollars on his next contract, look at where he spends his time. The amount of time that he actually spends playing versus practicing is heavily skewed to practice, right? The amount of reps that he gets in the cage is incredible. The amount of balls that he watches versus strikes he swings at is disproportionate as well. And so I think when you translate that into business, if you look for a model, it is practice, it is dialogues, it is putting in the hours where you're not practicing on your clients. And that was a really big lesson for us. And it's something we're still learning and folding into our business on a daily basis. Yes, practice, practice, practice. Yes, no? Always. All right, take just a second. Tell us who you are. Sure. Uh, Jeff Glover from Detroit, Michigan. I've been listing it. All my family's here. I've uh, been listing and selling real estate now for 20 years. Yeah. And uh, I'm still on the ground personally selling anywhere from, say, 75 to 100 homes a year. And our team in Michigan does just under 1,000 transactions a year. Wow. Good morning, everyone. I'm Sarah Reynolds. I'm the CEO of Empower Home, uh, previous, previously known as the Reynolds Team Network. And our headquarters is out of the DC Metro location. We are also uh, serving families in nine additional locations. And uh, we've got uh, about 300 amazing humans that uh, are part of the Empower Home family. And right now we are on track to do 1.5 billion in sales volume and uh, to help right over 3,000 families this year. It's huge. Wow. All right. Well, we're all just gonna sit and medicate on what you both said about what you've accomplished so far. I'm looking at that average sales price. So that, how, how do you get that? <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> yeah. All right, so we're gonna talk about conversations, right? Sure. And if we could, let's break this into, into two, two parts. One is let's talk about uh, what we're hearing from sellers and what yep. we're hearing from buyers. Perfect. Right? So with sellers, the, the first thing that we hear is what? I'm, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait till the market comes back. Yep. Is that right? To some degree. So, gonna, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to let you two decide who wants to go first. 
mm -hmm. and and just share your thoughts or your conversations that you're 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 using today. Sure. Do you want to start us off? Sure. So about a, a few weeks ago, my director of sales came to me and said, you know, about 20 to 30 percent of our sellers are calling in saying that they want to wait and or rent their house out. And um, my first question to her is what was, uh, are we asking how long they're willing or wanting to be a landlord? Because one of the big, big things right now is if you guys don't take the graphs that Gary, Jay, and Jason went over with us yesterday and educate clients. That is our biggest tool with Keller Williams. There's a, there's a graph, they showed it yesterday, and um, there's a graph that shows what the average median price was in 2006, which was the height of the market before the Great Recession. Yeah. <clears throat> if you count the number of years, count the years from 20, 2006 all the way to where the graph is even, 10 years. That's right. So what the reality is, is you first need to educate your seller that when you're saying you want to wait, mm -hmm. how long are you willing to wait, right? So asking them, how long are you wanting to wait? Because in their mind, they're thinking, well, we'll just try this again next year. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, is right now is the best time for them to get the most yeah. money on the market right now. Without question. And if they wait, they will lose thousands of dollars. And if you guys wait on having that conversation, honestly, we have a fiduciary duty to the client. It is our job to have that conversation with the client and make sure that they know what waiting truly means. Now, we can't predict the future, <laughs> but we can look back at trends and know that it's got to come down before it then starts going back up. So I'm saying a minimum three to five years, minimum, yeah, yeah. right? Most and so like, Most likely that's right. Yep. And by the way, if I can back that up with some stats that aren't necessarily showing up in the public eye, um, piggybacking off your conversation, we look at five economic indicators of what's happening right now, all right? Um, so when you're going on appointments and you're sharing that dialogue, consumers need to have some sort of stat or, or evidence or uh, history so to true. back up everything you yep. just said. And so what we're sharing right now is look at your average showings per listing. That's real time, what's happening right now. You can go into showing time or whatever you use to track showings and you can look at your average showings per listing. You can look at price reductions. That's huge right now. And that's, by the way, when people say, well, wait a minute, the values, prices aren't going down. Uh, pr our report that just came out in July said that prices were up 8% year over year. Yeah, but what did it say January year over year? Prices were up 20%. Yeah. So it's not coming down. So it's actually a, it's, it's a so, false so good, right, yeah. perception that prices aren't coming down. All you have to do is look at price reductions. Yeah. If price reductions on average, we know when you have a listing, you have to reduce it, usually 5 to 7%, sometimes 10% if it's overpriced. Yep. Well, if all of a sudden we're seeing price reduction after price reduction after price reduction, then that means in the September, October market statistics, those are going to end up as closed sales with a reduced selling price because yes. you had to have two 5% price reductions. That's right. So if I'm working with a seller right now, I'm sharing showings per listing average. I'm showing uh, price reductions. I'm showing new listings. That's number three. I'm showing uh, expired listings per day right now. You can compare. You know, this time last year, we had 17 homes expire per day on average. Right now, we're having 37. Yep. Uh, and then, of course, you can look at, at pending sales. And all those five indicators are telling us it's going to show up in the market stats. The market stat we have right now is based on something that closed in July, went pending in June, uh, was put on the market in May, and based on comps from April, March, February, January, December. Yeah. That's a completely different market. It is. Take a breather. Yep. But Jeff, Huge. Jeff, I, can't, so, I can't, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang we're on. passionate. No, 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 that's beautiful, beautiful. I was just gonna, I was gonna let you take a sip of water, and I was gonna ask you to piggyback back <laughs> off of that and say, so what do you say when, let's say all that, yeah, because he's a hundred percent accurate. Yes. Okay, so you've said that, and the seller yeah. says, no, we're gonna list it blank. Thank you, Jeff, but I'm gonna list it blank. Mm -hmm. Now, what do you say? So I think, I think the key here in, in piggybacking on, on what Jeff said is you want to make 
a common enemy amongst the other actives. Okay. 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 So, so the common enemy are the other active homes yeah. that are for sale. And so one um, key conversation that has worked in that situation is the truth is, is that whoever leads the market. So when you're in a shift, the house, the seller that leads the market will always get more money than the followers. And so we look at our sellers and we say, you need to lead the market. You have to lead That's the market. That's guys. Hold on. There's, a, there's more to back that up. Ba back it Watch. up. Watch. Gary, yeah. when you bought this house, yeah. you had two or three questions for your agent. I did. Uh, is this a good neighborhood? Are these good schools? By chance, did you ask how long it had been on the market? No. Okay. Let's think about this for a moment. When you're shopping for real estate, you've got condition. We're looking at price. Jeff, do you think it's a good deal? It's common for a buyer to ask the question, how long has this home been on the market? It's very common. Sure. It's yes. like one of the most common questions. Yeah. So if you ask how long has the home been on the market, why are you asking that question? Well, because I think I could get a good deal. The perception is if it's been on the market for a while, you can get a better deal, right? Yeah. And don't you feel that most buyers are going to think that same way? Yeah, I guess so. So days on market is actually the enemy to a home's value. Yeah. The longer your home is on the market, the less it's actually worth. So we have to get ahead of the market before all of the reports, the September and October MLS reports that come out that say that prices are falling, we have to get it on the market in price right now before that shows up. And by the way, Gary, you get the best of both worlds right now. Can I tell you how? Please. You get to shop. You get to shop. Or, I'm sorry, you get to put your home on the market before the data comes out saying that prices yep. are falling. Yep. And when the data starts coming out that prices are falling, your home will be pending. And you get to be a buyer when all of those other homes start coming on the market. And do you know why there's going to be more homes yep, that coming was on the good. market? So good. Oh, why? Wow. Because fear causes people to get off the fence. And you know the news, the minute they get a hold of, let's say prices drop 1%. Ready for the headline? Prices tumble for the first time in over a decade in Blank County. And what that, what's that going to do? It's going to create fear. Yeah. It's going to cause people to put their homes on yeah. the market, which is going to give you a lot of options to choose from, but we have to get ahead of it. Yeah. So we have to get on the market now. We need to sell my home now. Yep. Yes, without question. So how, you have the best of both worlds. So how low can I market? Well, so, yep. So, I get, I so good. So good. Right, now, right, right. now, if they still say no, right? So that was in the conversation. Gary said no. You want to dive into motivation. So if, if I know that Empower Home agents are skilled enough with a highly motivated seller to have the conversation to get them to where they need to be, as long as they're motivated. So you want to ask a lot of why questions to understand their motivation in terms of why they're wanting to make the move. And if they're motivated, you still want to take the listing and then get really good at frameworks and conversations around getting a price adjustment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I love that. You want to switch gears real quick to buyers? Please. So buyers look up and have the same issues, right? Mm -hmm. And buyers say, well, I'm going to wait for prices to come down. Yeah. What, what do I say? You can wait for prices to come down, but if prices come down, let's just say 10%, and interest rates go up 1%, which everyone is predicting that's going to happen in the next 12 to 18 months, how much have you really saved? Not much. You always want to ask the question in a, in a polite and professional way. Gary, if you don't mind me asking, what is, in your mind, what is the value in waiting? Well, I, I, can, I can get a better deal. Sure, and by the way, before the reason why we ask that question is because they might have something going on in their life. They might have a situation taking place. Uh, they might be you know, figuring things out. We, we automatically, as agents, assume that it's about the money. Yep. And no one ever moves for the money. The money is a byproduct. The, mo the money is a secondary factor to making the move. Yeah. So it's important but when they, they say that, we but, ask, but what's they, the value? But they, will, but they will make it front and center even though it's actually not. They'll, sure. they'll let the money conversation <laughs> keep them from doing what they really want to do or need to do. And that's yes. why it's our job to get them off of that and talk about why they're actually moving in the first place. Wait. Buyers make purchases on emotion, right? And so it's, I think they automatically correlate the real estate market to the stock market. And the truth is, is that, you know, you don't, you don't go home every day to your, to, to your stocks. You don't go home to that, right? Uh, you get to live life in, in a home. You get to build wealth. Um, that, that slide that they showed us yesterday, rent, renting versus owning, is so powerful. That is immediately going in our buyer presentation. But just un helping them understand that buying a home is not the same decision process as investing in the stock market. It's very, very different. It's a lifestyle decision, and you need to talk that through, just yeah. as Jeff said. Yeah.
Yeah. It's a lifestyle decision that actually also, shocker, has tremendous financial upside yeah. over a 20, yep. 30, 40 year period. Which, by the way, is, and, and you talked about it yesterday about how we have to increase contacts, and trust me, I would love to reiterate that, but that's, you're going to have agents start to wonder, well, I used to go on appointments and get 70%. And now I'm at 60. What's changed? Well, if they were getting a check for $180,000 and now they're getting a check for $120,000, you might have less sellers excited about making that move. Yeah. So then it goes back to we need to increase our daily contacts by at least 30%. Because if the percentage of listings that sell in this last market was 95%, I mean, pretty much you put a banana on the market, you can get $100,000, $200,000 for it. If the percentage of listings that sell drops from 95 to 65 percent, which is a normal market, yeah. then that actually means we have to take 30 to 35 percent more listings just to do the same amount of business, which yeah. means we need that 30 to 35 percent more leads, which means we need 30 to 35 percent more contacts per day yeah. so just to do the same. Yes. So now you want to increase your business, it's going to have to be 40, 50 percent more per day. Yeah. And one thing you want to remember is it's, it's third-party endorsement of, of stats and things like that. So facts tell, stories sell, okay? So a story will create an emotion to cause your buyer or seller to act. So I always share a story of when I bought my first house. So I bought my first house in the height of um, the real estate market in 2007. Um, only had my license for a year. They gave me a $500,000 mortgage. Is that not crazy? That's crazy. Okay. That's crazy. You he, told them you were going to be a great agent. I, yeah. <laughs> yes. It, it turns out I was right. That's all you know, it took like back that's then. A, <laughs> So I tell the story of me purchasing that home, and yes, it did decline. Um, and now it's one of the number, one of the top um, assets that me and my husband own that it contributes to our wet net worth. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. we've we've it held on, it went down and then it skyrocketed past oh, yeah. what I what I paid for it. Meanwhile, a renter has been paying the mortgage this entire time, yeah. um, and so telling the story of yeah, you know, it, it, real estate markets will go down or or, or will I, go up, right? My first, my first rental property, yep. right? I paid in the low sixties for it and watched it go to nineteen thousand. Mm -hmm. I know that because the property next 19, door, nineteen thousand. Yeah, it was a it was a townhome. Uh, project sure there are only 10 10 townhomes and the one right next door sold at foreclosure for nineteen thousand dollars but i sold it for ninety four thousand mm dollars -hmm. wow yeah the average just person remember it's not the real estate's fault if you lose money that means you just simply sold at the wrong time yep yep right? so true <clears throat> yeah yep so in in the chat we have, we have a bunch of people asking jeff, jeff you had talked about if if rates go up and yeah. prices kind of washes out what do you talk to people who are paying cash? How do you have that conversation with them if they're waiting for the market to change? Yeah, so if a, if a buyer is paying cash, again, I would go back to why are they buying? What are their timelines? What are they looking to gain from it? Of course, I think it's fair to say there's going to be more options and the prices are going to be lower in three to six months. So as a, a, a good buyer's agent, I'm going to make sure they understand that that's going to be the case. Now, of course, we don't know uh, what the government's going to do to, to spike home sales and create a, you know, let's say you're a cash buyer and all of a sudden they roll out a $7,500 first time home buyer tax credit. Now that investor buyer is competing with all these first time buyers that have flooded the market to buy the low end inventory. So to, to an investor with cash, I'm not sure there's a value in waiting because now if you're competing with that, you're now competing with hundreds of thousands of first time home buyers that have now been motivated to get out and buy something. Yeah. Lender credits, whatever. Yeah. One of my favorites is simply to tell someone, and we'll just play the game. You two can play with me, right? And I literally go, okay, tell me when we've hit bottom. Hold it. No, I'm okay. Yeah. Stop me. I mean, no, hit the buzzer. Okay. When we've hit bottom, tell me. We're ready. Yeah. Ready? Mm -hmm. Stop. <laughs> Yeah. You don't know. And you, you don't know until afterwards. You don't know, you don't know until way, afterwards. The buzzer gets hit. You don't know till you're here. Yeah. You don't know that you've hit bottom yeah. until you're already back out of it. Well, so the idea of yep. timing the market is absurd. Well, that, that's the, what, other... the market stats, that's what's so false about the market stats. Yeah, that's right. Prices are not up 8%. Sure, they're up 8% year over year. But look, other... look at last month, the month before that. There's one other script that's a good one. And it was one that Jay and I talked about. And that is... Um, you could tell your seller, we're back to sellers for a second, but you could tell the seller, um, let me give you an analogy. Mm -hmm. You walked into a casino with $100, okay? At some point during the night, you're up $500. Yep. But the night is young, and it's not time for you to leave yet, nope. so you keep playing. Yep. By the time they close the casino down, you're only up $300. Yep. Test question, did you make money or lose money? 
You made three hundred. Yeah. You you yep. you walked in with a hundred. You came out with three hundred. Two hundred. You yep. made money. Yeah. So the challenge you have right now is you're thinking that you're going to time this and sure. you're going to walk out at five hundred. Yeah. You need to be careful. Mm -hmm. The the other thing to to add to that to um, the chat question, the most powerful qu question in real estate <coughs> is why. So don't assume. So the. the this is so important, guys. Do not assume you understand. When they say, I want to pay cash, like, can I understand why you're choosing to pay cash? Yeah. Because a lot of times we just yeah. take what the seller or buyer tells us, and we don't ask questions to then educate and guide them along the way. Um, and so do not just take what they say. Yeah. You want to educate them. Is that the best decision right now? Right? And, and walk them through it in t terms of their full wealth building game plan to make sure that you're helping guide them. Yeah, so let's remember, let, let's dot that I, and that is, uh, because a lot of times we immediately think we need to understand the conversations and how to dialogue through them, and I think you do. But the most powerful sometimes is simply go, why do you, why do you think that? Yes. Why, why are you saying that? Yep. How did you arrive at that? Yeah, how yes. did you arrive at that? Yep. And, and, and yeah. And, and, Try to play the game of asking three questions or four questions. Yep. yep. Well, what would happen? What would you do if that yep. did yeah. happen? Yeah. Yep. I'm just curious. What do you What do you think's gonna? Yep. Gonna. Yeah. Yep. Go How three deep on every yeah. question. Okay. I have one last question, and the question is rates. So buyers say, "Man, it's. It, I'm gonna wait till rates come back down." Mm -hmm. Now, what do you say, Sarah? I mean, it's, it's along the same conversation, right? And, and leaning into um, lifestyle during that time, the, the tax benefit of owning. So um, on either Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac website, you can do the calculation with your buyer on the tax savings of owning versus renting the home. And so how much are they losing? They think they're, they're gaining, right? But how much are they losing between now and then and all of the benefits of owning versus waiting? Yeah, yeah. What people say, Jeff, um, you know, yeah, I'd love to sell my home, but then when I buy one, you know, I have, I have a 3% mortgage, right? I have a 3.5% mortgage, right? Mm -hmm. And jeepers, I'm so attached to that. Yeah. And, I mean, you're telling me right now I'd have to pay 4 mm -hmm. Why would I do that? It goes back to lifestyle. Why are you moving in the first place? What are you going to gain on the other end? And is it worth that cost difference? Yes. If you're going to pay $1,500 or more, more per month because of the rate or because the prices went up, what's going to change in your lifestyle by paying $1,500 more per month? What, what are you going to gain? Uh, is it going to be a bigger backyard? Is it going to be a better school system? Is it going to be a walkout lower level? What are the benefits that you're going to experience off of that additional $1,200 a month, $1,100 a month, $1,500 a month, whatever that is? Yeah, that's right. Of all, the, of all the checks that you're going to spend this month, how many of those checks will actually go towards any asset that will hold its <clears throat> value or appreciate over time? Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. The answer will be none. Yeah. Yep. So in this case, you may be writing a check and it may cost you more money. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's an investment in a lifestyle. Yep. And over time, you won't lose that money. And back to the mortgage rate a bit, um, th they're not staying in the home for 30 years. So you could calculate what it is over 30 years or you could calculate what it is over seven. Yeah. Ask them, how long do you plan, to be yep. plan on being in this home? Five years. Well, here's the difference that you're paying because, unfortunately, you, you waited until now. And, oh, by the way, if you wait longer, rates go up higher. Now here's the potential difference that you could be here's paying. Here's my point, and that is you're going to spend, you're going to then have all that money, but instead of investing it, you're going to spend it on stuff that don't go up in value and don't contribute to your lifestyle as much. If there's right. one c consumer decision that you could make today that would determine your happiness more than anything else, wouldn't it be in the home, home. where you live? Yes. Right. Yep. Yep. And, and yep. notice, Jeff asked the question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then went into it after understanding, oh, okay, you're planning on being in the house for seven years. Well, it's so important to ask questions. Do not just go right into the dialogue or r right into the conversation. Ask questions, understand what their goals are, and guide them through it. Yep. Yeah, one of the other things you can say about rates, guys, and that is show them like the chart that we show and say, well, how do you know they're not going to go higher? Yes. Mm -hmm. Please understand that we're even now at today's rate, yep. we're at a historic low. Yep. yep. Right, we're in that range of, let me show you the yeah. last 40 years. Yeah. Here's this chart that I have because you got it from us. Yes. Here's that chart, yeah. this historic look. So I don't know what game you think you're playing or to please share with me yeah. somehow, how do you understand that it won't be seven or 8%? Yep. It, it can go to 18. Yeah. 
So you're judging based on the past mm -hmm. instead of looking at the next 10 to 20 years. We may never see rates like you have again. Does so that true. mean you're never selling? Right. Yep. <laughs> yeah, right? Yep. Yeah, they don't move for money. That's, that's secondary. They don't. Yeah. So last question before we go, and that is, do you practice? Do you practice your conversations? Every day. Every day. Every day. Every day. Yeah. Every day. Every day. Uh, religiously, right? Yes. Gary, I've had role play partners from all over the country. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Every day. I mean it's yep. it's it, this is our this is our craft. This yes. is this is what we do, right? Yes. When I got in the business, um, I heard that same thing, right? And every day for fifteen to twenty minutes I had a script yeah, partner. It doesn't have to be long. A conversation partner. Mm -hmm. Right? And we literally went through the conversations and dialogues. Yep around what we would be talking uh, with people about that day. And it really does matter, you guys, because if, in fact, you spend that 15 or 20 minutes in a, in a dialogue, conversation, yep. practice scenario every day, you feel you want to go out and talk to people. That's yes right. or no? Yep. yep. The commonality amongst those that are successful in this business is exactly what Gary just said. I was at dinner with our, our amazing partners, part of Empower Home, and our new partner in Charlotte, Kristen, was talking about how much she's practiced um, with our listing presentation and with our dialogue around that. And I just paused, and I mean, she's a successful powerhouse. Yeah. And yet she was practicing for hours. Yeah. That is the commonality amongst all of the us that have, have built a great business in this business, we haven't stopped practicing. People make a decision on who they're going to hire based on how you make them feel. Yes. Unless you know them or their family, how do you make someone feel a certain way? Yeah. Based on what you say. Yes. If they're going to make a decision based on how we make them feel through yep. our dialogues, then what I say better be on point every single time. Yeah, I love it. All right, guys, thank, thank you so you. much. Thank, thank you, guys. Rock. Yep, yep, yep. Thank you, thank you. Thanks, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you.